So this is part two of Salt and Roses, the uh, Black History edition, let's say, at the end of February. And we left off talking about McDougal Street and its significance to the African-Canadian population. So it, it, it even spanned to modern day. Um, the, the, there's still a population there and, and a keen, you know, uh, sense of, of not ownership, but, you know, that's our, that's our place. You know, everybody's aware of it in the, in the, in the African Canadian community in Windsor, but the Windsor market wasn't far. Talk to, talk to me a bit about that yeah. and, and the this significance. Is, this is still home. Uh, a lot of our descendants still live here. My mother lives up the street. My yeah. sisters live around here. Uh, the Windsor market we were saying, uh, because of its roots here, got established at McDougal and uh, Pitt Street mm -hmm. in Chatham. Uh, not as a coincidence. It was a carryover from the days when that's where the main docks were. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people still live around here. Some of the footprints of that is Glengarry Park, for instance, is named for Fred Thomas. Mm. He's an African gentleman that was a professional athlete in three sports. Uh, Howard Avenue is named for an African Canadian descendant, Dr. Taylor School. Mm -hmm. have Just make it a little more personal. I was born on Niagara, but raised on McDougal Street. McDougal from Street. Waggle Park. And my okay. father, my grandfather, <laughs> sorry, even in the 60s, owns like two acres there and crop share cropped within the city. We had a cornfield, tomatoes, beans, chickens, and he would take them to market. And eggs, take them down to the market. And of course, that piggybacked over to the Eastern Market as well. In Detroit. In, Detroit. in, in downtown Detroit. Uh, so a lot of people just stayed here. This is home. Um, there's four churches on four corners. And those churches are still operational today. Tanner A.M. I mentioned, Mount Zion, Harrison Memorial, and First Baptist Church. So this is uh, where we came and this is where we stayed. The, only, the primary reason why we moved out into other areas, as I was saying about the 1850s, uh, fugitive slave law. That's the only reason why they went out into Puce, Maidstone, Harrow, Kingsville, yeah, like and helped uh, populate those areas. John Freeman well. Wallace is an example. He didn't feel quite so safe because he had a white wife. And exactly. he felt very unsafe this close to the border. And we yes. went a little bit further in that. Absolutely. Puce. That's right. And, and I think it's important to note that there, there was not segregation as we know it. Uh, there they integrated. Uh, there were those blacks who feared whites, especially those that, that came <laughs> recently out of slavery. Yes. But there was those who were fully immersed, you know, in the Canadian culture. So there was segregation in some senses, all black schools, all, all black, black churches, yeah. right? But there was also integration for those who had lived as free blacks for, for quite some time. Right. And I want to say, even Windsor, not only was it shaped then by the immigration of descendants of the Underground Railroad, refugees, even today it's still being reshaped when you look at the Haitians coming over and the African National Continentals. While we came on the Underground Railroad 200 years ago, they're coming on the Overground Railroad. So and they're changing parallel. the culture yeah. and the, you know, the way of life in Windsor. You see and Windsor's still a landing yeah. spot for them. So now yeah. English as a second language is now one of the, the growing areas of our education sector in creating employment for those who speak other languages. And it's an advantage. So it does shape the lives of everyone, even though you're a non-minority or non-refugee, you know, it's, it's effective. We, we eat the food, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you so it, it should shape the face and particularly the, the, the mindset of what people vi visualize as not only their downtown, but their city as yeah. well. This is, a, yeah. this is a patchwork, this is, is and, and, and it just keeps going. Cultural mecca of, of the world. And I wanna say, with regard to even the BIA, we have members, African Canadian members. What is the irony of having Ethiopia restaurant, the Ethiopian restaurant on University Avenue, right? Old London Street. Yeah. You have the Underground Railroad descendants from Africa, and you have Mother Africa coming here in like a reverse, <laughs> you know, slavery thing. We, we can't get home to the motherland, but the motherland comes right to us. <laughs> the cradle of civilization. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's Windsor. And Windsor's known all around the world to this day as a safe haven for those seeking asylum and or refugee status. You know, so it's, I appreciate the fact that you're, you're willing to highlight this in the mainstream. Yeah. Because we have influenced the mainstream. Very important. You know what I mean? Musically, culturally, politically. We've had many. You've seen the article in the Windsor Star recently where we had, you know, city fathers in the 1840s and 50s 
Uh, some were elected before that, but they didn't own land because they couldn't own land and they weren't allowed to sit, but they had the popular vote of the people. Mm -hmm. You have, a, a, I'm, I'm closing tidbit just off Mexico Street, you have um, Hotel Du Hospital. That started as a orphanage for black children or children of the Underground Railroad. I did not know that. Yes. Yeah, and if you look on the plaque in front of Hotel Du Hospital, you'll see African Indian children. Wow. And it was started by St. Alphonsus Church. I did not know so, that. So, yeah, you know, wonderful history. And there's pictures of it, eh? It, it, it was a little orphanage. It was an orphanage. They, they lived there. They went to school there. You name it. And the hospital's built up around it now. Kim, it's too much, man. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to, to share your uh, enthusiasm and knowledge about, well, black history in Windsor and beyond. Yeah. Neil, thanks again for this Salt and Roses segment. My pleasure, as always. And uh, we'll be back with more stories for you, so keep, uh, keep on watching. Yes. Okay.